Hi everyone, I'm Nick Wesselman, Product Manager for Developer Experience at Sitecore, talking to you from my home office here in North Carolina. Now today is an exciting day for Sitecore developers, because today is Sitecore 10 release day. Sitecore 10 has some great new features for you, and I'm here to tell you about them. First, I'm thrilled to say that we have released official Docker support and a Sitecore container registry with Sitecore 10. The Sitecore-sponsored Docker Images community effort has been growing in popularity, and we've been working closely with the maintainers of that repository as we've been working on our official images. If you've been using the Docker Images project, some things will look a little different, but there's a lot that will look familiar. But most importantly, you don't need to build your own images anymore, starting with Sitecore 10. We're also including support for both Docker Compose and Kubernetes orchestration, but you don't need to be deploying containers to production to use them in development. In fact, there's a lot of advantages to using containers with Sitecore development. First off, there's no need for a local install. You don't need to do a SIF install for every customer or Sitecore instance that you're working with. We're providing those base images that can be orchestrated with Docker Compose. If you find yourself working a lot with multiple Sitecore instances because you're at a partner working on multiple projects or otherwise have to maintain multiple Sitecore instances, you can now isolate those instances and their dependencies without the need for VMs. It also really simplifies the onboarding process for new developers. It can be as simple as cloning your code repository and doing a Docker Compose up to get a running Sitecore instance for your project. You also get uh, much easier environment consistency. No more works on my machine. You can even containerize your builds to have complete control over the build environment through your DevOps and CI pipeline. And finally, you really get environment stability. Because containers are immutable, if you break your local Sitecore instance, you can simply reset them and you're back to a healthy state. Besides the images themselves, I'm most excited about the documentation we're delivering. It covers many of the standard tasks or use cases that you as a Sitecore developer need to accommodate on containers and is supported by an open source examples repository on GitHub. So I believe we've really outlined here all the common things you'd need to do as a Sitecore developer and provide guidance for doing them with containers. Next up, we have a great new tool for your Sitecore utility belt the Sitecore CLI. This is a NuGet installed .NET command line tool that allows you to log in into and interact with a Sitecore instance. The login supports both interactive flows and client credential flows for automation and continuous deployment. We'll be adding a lot more functionality to the Sitecore CLI over time, uh, but its first major function is as an entry point into Sitecore content serialization our new headless serialization option, which we think combines the best of TDS and Unicorn into a unified tool. It supports a modular uh, configuration format, obviously pushing and pulling serialized items from Sitecore instances, a watch mode to uh, look for any new changes in your Sitecore instance that need to be pulled, and a lot more. And don't worry if you're not a fan of the command line, as you'll see, we still have you covered. So again, we think this new tool combines the best of TDS and Unicorn, but we also wanted something that worked more easily with containers, integrated Sitecore's identity system, and was really built for automation. So you'll find that Sitecore content serialization was built from the start for your continuous integration and deployment pipelines. But we also wanted something that appealed to what we see as two different types of developers, those who prefer the CLI and scripting, and those who prefer working in a GUI. And we wanted them to be able to work together on the same team. So in addition to the CLI, we're adding a new Sitecore Visual, for Visual Studio extension to the Sitecore developer collection, which will be available to all existing TDS customers. So whether you're a proponent of TDS or Unicorn today, we hope you'll become a fan of Sitecore content serialization and someone else will need to solve tabs versus spaces. Lastly, those of you who have worked with JSS are familiar with our headless development architecture and the services that support it, in particular the layout service. 
Today we have JavaScript SDKs for React, Angular, and Vue, which allow you to consume those services and create independently running JavaScript rendering applications. With Sitecore 10, I'm delighted to announce a new headless rendering SDK, this time for ASP.NET Core, giving you the ability to finally develop Sitecore sites with .NET Core. So this is just a start on our ASP.NET Core journey. Not all platform features are supported out of the box with this initial release, but we plan to continue evolving and enhancing this SDK based on your input. But as of today, you get rapid local development outside your site core delivery instance using ASP.NET Core. You can connect particular routes to site core as needed in those ASP.NET Core applications. And you can build in this headless architecture like JSS while retaining full experience editor support, tracking, analytics, and personalization for the marketers. So we have several options for developing with Sitecore now on the rendering side, and you're probably asking when you should use ASP.NET Core. So I'd say first off, you should consider it in projects where you would normally use what I call vanilla Sitecore MVC. So this might mean that you have heavily customized front-end or business logic, or otherwise wouldn't benefit from SXA features or workflow. You could also consider it in projects where you may have used JSS, but don't require the rich front-end or SPA experience that the JavaScript frameworks provide. And it may also be useful for existing ASP.NET Core applications or sites where you want to sort of sprinkle in site core or add site core content to specific routes within that existing application. So to sum things up, this is a big technology update for our developer experience. I hope you are all as excited as I am to work more with Docker, NetCore, and our new CLI. And we know this means a big technology update for you as well. There's a lot to learn. But these are features that you can adopt incrementally. We haven't replaced anything in site core 10 yet. You can still install with SIF, use TDS or Unicorn, and Sitecore MVC. But especially when used together, we see these new features as having huge benefits for Sitecore developers. Now, I'm sure experienced Sitecore developers in particular are itching to try out all these new features, and we wanted to make it really easy. Details are in the Sitecore 10 documentation, but you can use our getting started.NET new template, installable through NuGet to get a sample application that uses Sitecore containers, Sitecore content serialization, and the ASP.NET Core rendering SDK. Please go try it today. Again, the details are in Sitecore 10 documentation. So thank you for your time and the opportunity to share these new Sitecore 10 developer features with you. And I hope you're in agreement with me now. It's a great day for Sitecore developers. Cheers.